portion based segmentation. So we're going to look at the problem of um, trying to find moving objects um, from a stationary camera. And this problem is also known as change detection. Namely, we're just going to find uh, places in the image that have changed and they're probably due to moving objects. It's the first step for applications such as surveillance and tracking. We need to identify potential pixels that are belong to objects that are moving. So the typical approach for um, motion-based segmentation uses image subtraction. So we have a current image and we have created a reference or background image. We subtract the two, uh, threshold the difference values of the pixels and from those uh, pixels that are uh, threshold to one we um, do things like find connected components maybe get rid of small regions and group the pixels so how do we find a reference image the simplest is to take the last n images and take the average at each pixel so for example this would be a street scene if we took an average of many images um, such that the car or people have already moved through there, uh, we might get something that looks like this. So subtracting the two would give us um, places where the for this current image is different from the background. We can also avoid saving the last n images by computing a running average, basically a weighted sum of the previous background and the current image. Um, I'm going to show some demos using um, my USB camera and the programs in OpenCV. Um, this, the programs are pretty short. This one is just a preliminary program that shows how to uh, open a camera object and query that camera object to get the next image and then put that image into a window. The next, Im the next program uh, modifies that to take the difference between every successive pair so here it grabs one image, here it grabs a second image, here it computes the difference and displays it. The next one, um, instead of differencing the image, it computes a running average. So it grabs an input image, adds it to uh, an accumulated image uh, with a uh, alpha, a weighting constant of 0.03. And finally, this one, um, computes the running average, but then takes the difference with the current image and thresholds those difference values. So let me go ahead and run those. So like I said, this is the first image that simply um, grabs uh, each image and displays it. The second one computes the difference so there's the current image. Here is a difference image. So you can see as I move my hand, um, the and but if it stopped, of course you don't see anything. The third one um, computes a running average. So there's the input, and here is the average. So if I move my hand into the scene. Um, it gradually appears. If I take it away, it gradually disappears. And the last one um, computes, well, there's the input image. Here is the background image. And this is the difference between the current image and the background. So if I move my hand through, you can see that it shows up. If I leave it there, it slowly becomes part of the background and it should disappear. Okay, um, so how do we model the background? Uh, a more sophisticated way is to use the statistics at each pixel, namely the mean and standard deviation. So then given a new image, we can test to see if the new value is sufficiently different from the background. So provided that the um, values at a pixel indeed follow a Gaussian distribution like this, 
we could threshold, for example, at a three sigma value to flag uh, potential uh, foreground points. A uh, even more sophisticated way is to use uh, multiple Gaussians or a mixture of Gaussians. Um, for example, if, if a particular pixel was described by two separate distributions like that, so the total probability distribution would be the sum of those Gaussians, where this is the expression for a Gaussian, um, this is mu is the mean, sigma is the covariance, and this pi here is a weighting or mixing coefficient. An example of um, what that would look like in the case of color pixels. So this is a red component, a green component of the histogram. And this one shows that this particular pixel in this image, probably from the water, has two distinct populations. Um, this one, I believe, is from this monitor, which also has two distinct populations. Other background modeling methods. Um, Median is potentially better than the mean for creating a background model because um, if an object passes through there briefly, then it would not affect the value of the background there. So as long as your um, object was a, for, was a foreground pixel less than half the time, then the value would not be affected. Um, even more sophisticated is modeling the background as a bunch of eigenvectors. So we, we take the sample of n images, um, treat them as one-dimensional vectors, compute an eigen decomposition of that, and keep the top um, d um, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Okay, so once we've found a background and subtracted our new image from the background, how do we track objects? Well, the simplest way is to find connected components and use cross-correlation to track um, a re region from one image to the next. Um, this has some problems, as you can see. For example, the um, shape may change over time or a single object may be split or two objects may be joined. Uh, this is an example application I did um, of a street corner scene like this. This is the background image, the difference from the background. I actually um, created a shape template and appearance template, namely um, over a brief period of time, the last n images. Um, and that template was used to search for the sh for that particular object in the new uh, image. Um, see if this runs. So this is the result of that tracking program showing um, the objects that were tracked. Um, you can see, for example, places where people are split or accidentally joined. So um, this is a uh, fairly simple tracker that doesn't work all that well, but doesn't use very much knowledge at all about the scene. In fact, there's no knowledge of, of people or cars or anything like that. So you can get a lot more sophisticated with the results. This particular paper uh, concentrated on how to merge blobs or separate blobs corresponding to different people or keep track of places where two people would cross and uh, be momentarily joined. Um, another interesting thing is a this phenomenon of a ghost where a um, points are, are detected as foreground but really are not. And this can be caused by lighting variations or objects that have started and stopped. For example, this car in this image is originally part of the background. It's parked, but it moves out and becomes foreground, but leaves um, a hole where, where it used to be, which is detected as different from the background. And um, that's falsely identified as a moving object. This, this example shows um, a person who has opened a locker here, thus changing the background. That's detected as a moving object, which is really a ghost. And we even have a ghost shadow here. Um, so if we can identify those ghost pixels, they should be incorporated into the background. We can identify them. Uh, this particular paper that's referenced um, checked the optical flow of image regions to see if they were low enough 
If they were, then they're probably not a moving object. Or checking the color of the object to see if it was uh, similar to the background. And if so, it's probably not a moving object. It's probably a shadow.